Over the last couple of years, there's been this huge uptick in video games being affiliated with horror and general unease. I'm not talking straight up horror games like Amnesia, Left 4 Dead, or Flavor of the Month mascot franchise. I mean ones that aren't intentionally trying to be scary, but after you look a little deeper, you realize, oh, wow, this actually is pretty creepy. I, I don't know how to feel about this. And it may not even be the whole game, just a level or section that has the most random tonal whiplash ever. So today, I thought it'd be fun to talk about a bunch of odd things that scare me in games. And disclaimer, a lot of these are from when I was a kid, so they might be j just just a little irrational. But even to this day, I kind of dread revisiting some of these parts because of the emotions I remember affiliating with them. Maybe I'm just a coward, but these can still send shivers down my spine. Just please don't make fun of me in the comments. Please, 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 please. It's me, Mario! You know, I always hear people talk about how scary Mario 64 is, and I can kind of get that with Wet Dry World or Lethal Lava Land, but most of this shit has always just made me laugh. Like, I thought the piano was the funniest thing when I was five. Instead, the source of my nightmares was Mario Sunshine, and it was all because of one thing. The water. Because Sunshine is set on a tropical island in the middle of the ocean, water is everywhere. The hub world, the stages, the final boss where Bowser's <laughs> just taking a bath. And you know, most of the time it is pretty harmless, but then there will be those instances where you're like, yeah, no, 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 I I'm not going near that. And I got three examples for this. Number one, in Rico Harbor, after you beat the Glooper Looper, it falls into the murky water on the side of the stage. This wouldn't be so bad if you didn't have to go down there in the next mission. I always thought it was still swimming under the goop just waiting to grab me. It's like when you're at the lake and there's that one area full of algae and seaweed that you avoid like the plague. You don't want to go near it because there's just something swimming around there that wants to kill you. Number two, the mission in Noki Bay where you gotta perform oral surgery on this big ass eel. I don't get how people are scared of the one from 64 when this guy is actively trying to eat you and cloaked in darkness the whole time. Not to mention, you have to get uncomfortably close to attack it, and you don't have a lot of places to hide or move around because the area is pretty claustrophobic. I actually feel bad for Mario right here, like I'm sorry I gotta do this to you man. But the worst contender of all, and you're gonna laugh at me, is this cutscene. You don't know how much damage this did to my psyche. The way the water gets uncontrollably wavy and fast just scared the absolute shit out of me. Cause imagine being a poor, helpless soul who's having a fun little swim, you know, minding their own business, and then out of nowhere this happens. Never mind the stupid ass robot that shows up, those waves are the real enemy. I swear this cutscene haunts me to this day. Like if I'm ever in a huge pool, I actively avoid going into the middle in fear of it getting all wavy or something dragging me under. But still, having this fear ingrained in my head for so long has just always made me concerned with water. Maybe this is me coming to terms with a fear of the ocean or depths or whatever, but Mario Sunshine can honestly be a pretty unsettling game. Like that huge manta ray you gotta fight in Sierra Beach, or how Delfino Plaza gets flooded right before the final boss. How many Piantas died in this, by the way? I know a lot of people think 64 is creepy because it was the first 3D Mario, and they were still figuring stuff out for the style, art, and just general direction of the series. Sunshine is when I think they figured most of this out, but since there's so much world building, they didn't know where to draw the line. I don't usually come back to Sunshine, mainly because I think it sucks, but whenever I get to these sections, I always remember five-year-old me being horrified by them. In fact, any time I play a new game, I can tell instantly if its water section would have scared me at that age. For example, I didn't grow up with Wind Waker. The first time I played it was the HD version when I was 14. And when I ran into one of the big Octo fights, I knew instantly I would have cried over these. The sky getting stormy, the whirlpool, the music, and of course the huge monster that's gonna eat you. Thankfully, this stuff doesn't really scare me anymore. I, I mean, I'm not gonna go deep sea diving anytime soon, but you know, the water's chill. However, I will say, that cutscene will always be in the back of my head somewhere. 
Okay, next thing, let's go. Captain Shid. Grown up, one of my favorite games to play with my sibling was Kirby Air Ride, specifically City Trial. Oh my god, this thing is awesome. For any uncultured swine who doesn't know what I'm talking about, City Trial is genuinely one of the best co-op modes ever. You and your friends that you don't have are dropped into a huge arena and your goal is to collect a bunch of status upgrades and find a good air ride machine. These are what you use for racing and general mobility, with each having their own designs and stats. This is all for the end game, which can be a variety of different things. Sometimes a race, a boss fight, hitting targets, there's a lot of options surprisingly. But what also makes City Trial awesome is the arena itself. There's so much to explore, so many secrets to discover, like, dude, I will never forget the first time I broke the huge star and all the power-ups just rained down. That was mystical. So much time and thought went into this map that I swear there's still parts to it I haven't discovered. I'm not joking. I could go on for hours, and to be honest, I kinda want to. G give me like six months. But there was always a bit of randomness to City Trial that I was never a fan of. It's the events. These randomly occur throughout the match and greatly affect it in different ways. Like how about the one where huge meteors are falling while the scariest music ever plays? Or when Dynablade comes down and the sky turns pitch black? And these aren't just one-off examples, literally every event is unsettling or overstimulating. The fog is super eerie and makes it look like a Silent Hill game. The burning rail station set everything on fire. The UFO is just a huge floating ship that leaves a really ominous shadow. A muck engines has your boards going from zero to a hundred like instantly. Even the lighthouses scare me because the sky got all dark, which is hilarious because these events restore your health. So it's not even supposed to be scary, but, but it still is. As much as I love City Trial, there was always this lingering sense of dread anytime I played it as a kid. I'd just be looking for Dragoon pieces, you know, minding my own business, and then BAM, it just became a horror game. And the worst part is, it took me over a decade to learn you can turn these off. I don't know why I didn't think of this as a kid to save me from the trauma, but, you know, better late than never, I guess. I just don't understand why out of anything in this game, they made these harmless events so goddamn scary. But given that Kirby games have a weird track record with scary shit, it, it kinda checks out. I don't know why these cute, fun little games need to have the embodiment of Satan in them, but yeah, the dichotomy is crazy. If any of you brave souls have played Kirby Air Ride, tell me if you thought the events were scary. Cause I wanna know if I'm being a paper-backed bitch, or everyone watching just had war flashbacks of the meteor strikes. But I will say, all of these events are nothing compared to the real horrors of this game. The item bouncer. Stop, stop, oh my god. Pokemon has always been an outlet for horror, as seen by the numerous creepy pastas and urban legends surrounding it. You know, stuff like Pokemon Black, Lost Silver, or the Lavender Town Syndrome to name a few. I remember having a small creepypasta phase when I was like 11, and to be honest, these never really did anything for me. Mainly because of their varying degrees of quality, but I, I think I was just too young to get it. However, while I didn't find these scary, I was still horrified by another part of the games. Legendary. I feel these are something that's made at least most of us a little uneasy, cause, I mean, anytime you see those hyper-realistic Pokemon drawings, there's always one of Kyogre or Mewtwo. These look disgusting. Great work though, you're all very talented artists, but goddamn. These things scare me no matter the generation. With Kanto and Johto, they can be oddly detailed and uncanny, cause they didn't get the art style down yet. Like look at Moltres, he's all mangled and looks nothing like he does in later games. The style became more defined by Hoenn and Sinnoh, but as a result, they gave us legendaries that genuinely look terrifying. Their massive size, complex designs, and they always look so angry, like, dog, what's the matter? When I told you, I'm in a shit mood, and what have you been doing? Fucking picking at me all night. But it was more than just their devilish looks that creeped me out. For starters, they're all located in these isolated, barren parts of the map that rarely have any other trainers in them. 
the power plant, Cave of Origin, Stark Mountain. All these feel so desolate and detached from the rest of the game. And they're just standing there, menacingly. Also, some of their story implementations are pretty unsettling too. Like Mewtwo being the result of years of horrific genetic engineering to replicate Mew, or Giratina being banished to the distortion world by Arceus for its violent and unstable behavior. Now, to be honest, a lot of this flew over my head as a kid, because I barely read any Pokedex entries or talked to NPCs. But in retrospect, being blissfully ignorant was probably for the best. I think the worst offender to all of this was Rayquaza, because, because, I mean, just look at this thing. It's a huge flying snake with claws and red lips that, I shit you not, I always thought was blood. Because let's be honest, Rayquaza would eat people if it were real. I, I see the look in its eye. But again, it's not just the design, it's also how it's depicted in the games. The best example I can think of is Red Rescue Team. Towards the end of the main story, a meteor is hurtling towards Earth, and the only way to stop it from killing everyone is to get Rayquaza to blow it up. So you trek all the way up Sky Tower only for it to be a stubborn asshole and attacks you. I had so much trouble with this fight growing up, not only because Rayquaza is a super high level, but I never had any health or stat items left because I used them all in the dungeon. I still remember the day I beat it, I cried for like five minutes. Also when it just randomly attacks you in subspace emissary, yeah that was fun. Nowadays, though, I feel legendaries have lost their mystique after Gen 4. A lot of their designs are either extremely busy or too out there to be even remotely intimidating. Like the ones from Scarlet and Violet are literally motorcycles. What even is this? It also doesn't help that Pokemon's art style has been stagnant for the past decade, but, you know, that's a conversation for another time. Whether you guys think I'm a coward or just looking too deep into these differently colored birds, you know, that's all up to you. But hopefully someone else out there thinks Darkrai inhabiting people's dreams and making them experience never-ending nightmares as a defense mechanism is just a little scary. You know, just a wee bit. Just, just a wee bit. Just a wee bit. Yeah, love. Just a wee bit. Just a wee bit. Oh, spiders! Spiders! Get them off me! Get them off me! Get them off me! Before we get to the last entry, I wanted to give a quick honorable mention. I don't have as much to talk about compared to the others, but I still thought it'd just be fun. That's my guinea pig. I let him speak for me. My biggest fear that I've had for a while is spiders. Now, I'm cool with the small ones like Daddy Longlegs, but with tarantulas that are bigger than your hand? Yeah, no, I just, I, I just can't with those. This is probably gonna haunt me for the rest of my life, because there's no way I'd ever be willing to face it. Like, dude, anytime I go to a zoo, I'll actively avoid their habitat. So if you could imagine, I don't particularly fancy them in media. Like, I can barely get through the Aragog scene in Chamber of Secrets, because just look at these monsters. But it's especially bad in video games. Now, I should stress, it's a matter of how they're designed. I can stomach the Skulltulas from Ocarina of Time, because they're blocky and mildly cartoonish, but compare those to the ones from Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword, and hopefully you see where I'm coming from. I don't know why game devs have a universal law to give everyone arachnophobia, but they'll do it. Oh boy, they'll do it. The big spider boss from Twilight Princess, the Duke Steer Freya from Dark Souls 2, the frostbite spiders from Skyrim. I used to watch my sibling play Skyrim all the time, but whenever they fought one of those things, I ran out of the room, screaming. Hell, even the Minecraft spiders creep me out, mainly the small ones in abandoned mine shafts. How they all gang up and poison you every three seconds. Not to mention that disgusting walking sound. Ugh, it's gross. Like I said, this is an honorable mention because there's not really a whole lot else I can say. There isn't a deeper meaning or anything psychological about it. They're just huge spiders. They're very overt with their scariness. But yeah, to any up-and-coming game developers, don't put spiders in your game. It feels like everyone hates those. Why not do, like, huge slugs or something? <laughs> that, that'd be way better. Alright, on to the last thing. This is what, what I like to call the Nintendo Shit Cube. For the last entry, I thought it'd be fitting to talk about the scariest thing of all time. Music. Oh no, a D minor chord. Wait, that's D flat. My guitar's in half step. God damn it! Now, I don't know about y'all, but I don't usually get scared by music unless it's a very specific composition. Like, I never get scared by loud orchestra noises in a horror movie whenever there's a jump scare. <laughs> I'm more annoyed than anything. 
The track needs to feel off in a sense, you know, weird tempos, unique instrumentation, and either staying uncomfortably static or building to a huge climax. Video games are more than familiar with this, as sometimes their scariest tracks can end up being one of the best. Songs like the Lavender Town theme, Wet Dry World, Final Hours from Majora's Mask, all of these are unnerving in their own way. The only issue is these ones have been talked about to death. It's like, oh, you need scary music for a video? Let's use The Place from Earthbound for the 8 billionth time. Also, some of these are just bops, like Wet Dry World is groovy as hell. However, there is one song that to this day still makes me feel uneasy. If this video didn't make it obvious enough, I was a huge GameCube kid growing up. Well, also just Nintendo in general, but you know. And for all the good memories I have with it, there is one scary one that I just cannot shake. Something always just felt off about the GameCube menu theme. It feels empty, but intentionally. For starters, the only instrumentation are these droning midis that echo and gradually get quieter the longer they're held. You're constantly waiting for it to go to another section or add more layers, but it never does. It's just stagnant. That was always the biggest thing for me. I wanted something to change in the song, but it just wouldn't. It's a 30 second loop, if even, of the same notes, the same instruments, the same everything. It's like the calm before the storm. You have this psychological instinct that something's gonna happen, and so you're waiting in anticipation for it, but nope, nothing. And in some ways, that's even scarier than what you thought was coming. This feeling of emptiness is exacerbated by not only the music, but also the visuals themselves. The transparent menu box that's aimlessly floating in this dark void. You can stay on this screen for hours, and it'll remain the exact same. There aren't text alerts, the box doesn't change size, Mario doesn't float by in the background. That would be really funny, though. You're just stuck here. It's crazy how something as arbitrary as a menu can give off such strong feelings of unease and paranoia. Now, obviously, I wasn't thinking that as a kid. Anytime I was in the menu, it was because my GameCube was having trouble reading discs, so I'd be frantically cleaning it to get out of there ASAP. It was only when I got older did I really understand the existential dread of the GameCube menu. Well, that and also how different it is to Nintendo's other menus. I'm not sure if there are any factors to this, but starting with the Wii, they've all felt like an intentional 180 in terms of mood and overall design. The Wii's was a lot more toned back with its sleek design and minimalist approach. The Wii U retained this look, but is extra glossy and welcoming thanks to the Miiverse display. And side note, this one still just looks genuinely beautiful. And the Switch, it's just boring. It's stagnant, and not in the cool way like I said with the GameCubes. I mean the, there is nothing going on here, it's really boring and soulless type of way. Maybe it was also just a thing of its time. The whole dark and futuristic style was big in the early 2000s. I mean, just look at the PS2. It was released in the same console generation, and its menu elicits very similar feelings. Either way, out of all the entries I listed today, this is the one I'm most fascinated by. Even though it still makes me a little uneasy, I'm not gonna lie, I feel extremely intrigued by it. Like I had it on in the background while writing this section, and it helped tremendously with putting me in the right mindset and fleshing out my thoughts. Maybe that's a little concerning, like it's a siren song that's luring me to my doom, but I don't know, this is a fear I have an unexplainable urge to study. Alright, that's enough of being scared. I hope you all enjoyed this journey into the dark, unsuspecting recesses of video games I grew up with. Like I said in the intro, a lot of these are pretty irrational and mainly stuck out because of the age I played them at. With the exception of the spiders. I swear to god I base the quality of a game on if they have big spiders or not. That's why Wind Waker is a 10 out of 10. All those bastards drowned in the flood. 
Either way, it was still a lot of fun opening these old wounds and reliving some nightmare fuel. If any of these examples I listed freaked you out, or you feel comfortable sharing some of the things that scare you in games, I'd love to hear about them in the comments. Don't be afraid of people ragging on you, because all that's going to be delegated to me. Unless you're scared of, like, leapfrog games, which in that case, you deserve to be mocked. Thank you all for watching, and I actually will consider that City Trial video. Just give me time. There's a lot of things I want to discuss. Though knowing me, I'll probably just say I'll do it, and then won't. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Good night, y'all.